Now we'll talk about something called the discriminant. If the radicand in the quadratic formula, b squared minus 4ac, is called the discriminant and can tell us about the nature of the solutions of a quadratic equation. If the discriminant is positive, there are two real unequal solutions. If the discriminant is equal to zero, there's one real solution, which you can also think of as two real equal solutions. If the discriminant is negative, there are no real solutions. Here's a picture of what would happen when we graph different quadratic equations depending on how many solutions we have are and what the value of the discriminant is. So if our discriminant is positive, you're going to have a graph that intersects the x-axis in two places. If the discriminant is equal to zero, it's going to intersect the x-axis in one place. So you have one solution. If your discriminant is negative, when you graph the quadratic equation, it's not going to intersect the x-axis at all. So you're not going to have any solutions. So we'll look at some examples here. Use the discriminant to determine the nature of the solutions to each. So here we have x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to 0. So our discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. Uh, we see here a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 6, c is equal to 9. So we'll plug everything into this, and we get negative 6 squared minus 4, a is 1, c is 9. So here we end up getting 36 minus 36, which is equal to 0. So this means there's going to be one real solution. But now we'll take a look at what this looks like graphically, just so we can see that, yes, there is one real solution. We are going to talk more about how to graph quadratic equations in Chapter 9. So we have our x and y axis labeled. If we graph this, we do end up having 1x intercept at x is equal to 3. And we also have the points on this graph, 0, 9, and we have the point 5, 9 on this graph. And if we were to connect this, this is going to be a quadratic, so this should be curved. So something like this. And it only intersects the x-axis right here in one spot, so that's why there's one real solution. This problem only asked us to determine the nature of the solution. It didn't ask us to actually find the solution. But if we did go through with the whole quadratic formula, we would get one answer, which is x is equal to 3. Here's another example. We have x squared plus 4 is equal to 0, and we want to determine the nature of these solutions. So if we were to write this out, we have x squared plus 0x plus 4 is equal to 0. Now here we can see a is equal to 1, b is equal to 0, and c is equal to positive 4. So now when we plug everything into the discriminant, we end up with 0 squared minus 4 times 1 times c, which is 4. We end up getting the discriminant is equal to negative 16. So this is negative, so we see that there's no real solutions. But now let's take a look at what's going on graphically here so we can see why there aren't any real solutions. So the graph of this quadratic is going to look something like this. We have a y-intercept over here at this point, 0, 4, but that's it. We don't intersect the x-axis anywhere, and that's why there's no real solutions to this problem. Again, here we want to use the discriminant to determine the natures of the solutions to this quadratic. So here we have a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 1, c is equal to negative 2. Our discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So b squared is negative 1 squared minus 4, a is 1, c is negative 2, it's going to become 1, plus 8 is equal to 9. And 9 is greater than 0, so this tells us we're going to have two real solutions, or two real unequal solutions. If we wanted to take a look at what's going on graphically to better understand why there's two solutions, the graph of this equation looks something like this. So I'm graphing this. If we did go through and use the entire quadratic equation to solve this, we would end up getting our solutions are x is equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 3. So those are going to correspond to our x-intercepts over here. Then we have something called the vertex, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and that's going to fall at the point 
So we're going to see exactly how to find that in chapter 9, and the graph is going to look like something like this. So we're going to intersect the x-axis in two places, and that's why there's two real solutions.